And do we have a great show for you today? Because yeah. first, we are simulcasting. That's right, we are simulcasting on Crazy D Radio, on Blog Talk Radio, right. also Facebook, and also uh, YouTube. Yeah. So we're, we're doing this, you know, we're doing this at Lord Land Films. And then, of course, this is brought to you by the Black Ice Chronicles. Back in Cleveland DVD, the Black Ice Chronicles Back in Cleveland DVD, available, the film is available to stream on lordlandfilms.com, and it's available on hard copy on lordlandfilms.com, we'll get it out to you, and of course we have the, the film review t-shirts, this is the gray and white coming soon, yeah. but then we have the uh, classic black with the white letters. So go right on to lordlandfilms.com and order your t-shirt today. So do we have a great show for you today? How do you like that intro coming to you while we're broadcasting live? Today? Yeah, you know, I think that's pretty good. Uh, we have a great show coming up for you tonight. We are reviewing Kevin Hart's The Upside. Yes. And we're reviewing the new Fox uh dystopian vampire meets Freddy Krueger type stuff the uh, called The Passage. That's right. So we're uh, definitely uh, looking forward to bringing you that as I set up these pages here so that we can uh, uh, better bring it to you. You know what I mean? So go ahead. Uh, first of all, tell them about who's in the cast for Kevin Hart's film. Um, the passage. Of, no, 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 not the passage. The oh, upside. The, the upside. Right. Really good film. Mm -hmm. Starring Kevin Hart, Nicole Kidman, Brian Cranston, and Aja Naomi King. We know her from How to Get Away with Murder on ABC. And also the Nat Turner story, correct? Yep. Yeah, go ahead. This film was really good. I it mean, really good. I was. I know it would be good because Kevin Hart, he picks like really good projects. Really good projects. But to see him in a drama, it was really good. I mean, it was a, a, a tearjerker. Mm -hmm. um, the theater was packed. I was impressed. Like the storyline, um, the uh, the acting, of course, was superb, and just I love the relationship Kevin's with the Kevin's character in the film, Dale. I love the, his relationship with his son, and um, that was really touching. Along with his relationship with Philip. Okay, so so let 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 film. let's drop the uh, let's do the synopsis on the film. Okay, so it opens up. It's a man. He's down on his luck. Yeah. He's a, uh, we don't know if he's a, uh, he's a one-time felon coming back home after doing a bid. And his dramatic need is, his dramatic need is, is that he needs to find work yeah. or he may be violating yeah. his probate probation and he'll have to go back. So he goes around yeah. with this signature sheet that he's actively trying to search for work. Right. He goes around and he gets this signature sheet signed off, right? right? right. So he gets the signature sheet signed off right. 
and um, he gets the signature sheet signed off. And from there, hmm, we got something going on here. From there, he's uh, got the signature sheet, but he happens to walk into a situation that he thinks is for a janitorial job. Mm -hmm. I'm just setting it up. He thinks it's a janitorial job, right? But it, it, he finds out that it's something else, and that is the takes uh, mm -hmm. initiating event, right. the meeting between. You've seen this in the trailer, so that is not a spoiler. Right. You've seen this in the trailer, right. so um, he um, does that, and he goes off, and he begins his. Uh, he goes off and then you find out more of his dramatic need, which has to do with his family. Mm -hmm. And thus it kicks off from there and the story moves. Now what listen. I but look, what I enjoyed was not only uh the character Dale's relationship with Philip and his son, I enjoyed his interaction with everyone really, like with um uh Nicole Kidman, the business manager. As well as everyone else from the physical therapist to um, the cook. I mean, just he the way he interacted with everyone, his character was a really, really likable guy, you know, and who was down on his luck. And his personality, you could help but like him, mm -hmm. you know. So uh, his character was very... Um, He's very like admirable. Admirable. Did I pronounce it right? Uh -huh. Admirable. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Listen. The whole the, the the structure of the film, the way it's written, the way that they introduced to you each uh main character and what their driving force is, uh along with then uh, uh starting with his dramatic need. You know, opens up with that. Then it opens up. It shows you uh, the rich man's character. Right. Good. Shows you the people who are around him. Right. And what he's looking for, and what his possible arterial motive is mm -hmm. for looking for someone like the Kevin Hart character right. to do what he does. Now, Kevin Hart's acting in this. Superb. I mean, his dramatic acting skills uh, cannot be denied in this picture. I, we were sitting there, and I thought to myself, we're looking at the new Sidney Poitier, except for he was except for he was a comic, right? But we're looking at the new Sidney Poitier, and, and that's the... Uh, strange part about the whole thing. It's not really strange, but yet it is that here's a man that's coming from comedy and he's bringing this strong performance. And at first, like he said, you know, people doubt you. Right. Like he said, that Cranston, Cranston right. doubted him at first and even went out to dinner with him to see if he would be able to uh, uh, pull this off. And he was... And after he met with him, he was confident because Cranston is an actor's actor, right? right? Yeah. And it's just something, it's a tearjerker. If you do yeah, not walk out of the theater yeah. uh, just tear jerked, then uh, I don't know what to say. I don't know what to say. It's just a tear jerker. Right. It's something that's going, that, that is very entertaining. Mm -hmm. His ability to emote on screen yeah. um, is just fantastic. Kevin Hart film. So, the politics of the film. The way Kevin Hart played this role, mm -hmm. there was no buffoonery in the way that he played this role. Not at all. 100% he played the man uh, with dignity yes. with force no yes sir boss sir and none of that none of that none of that even came up it was just showing his unique 
view of the world yeah. through who he was as a person. Yeah, he was likable. Yeah. So him as a person and then uh you saw Cranston's character's right. unique uh thought process on the world right. having gone through loss. Right. Right? And then you have uh Nicole Kidman. Yeah. Let me tell you something. Everything Nicole Kidman plays in, yeah. she's just good. She's a good actress. She's just seasoned. Yeah. She's a great actress. You know, yeah. and and you know, she keeps herself looking a certain way. Yeah. You know, and, that, and that's hard with that. You know, she it's looks just like, the same. Yeah, she looks the same. Yeah. But that's hard with that fair skin that she has. And then uh, same thing with uh, people who are dark fair skin, who have a real rich dark pigment right. to their skin, a uh, rich fair dark pigment. Mm -hmm. It's hard to maintain yeah. that, you know, it's hard to maintain, yeah. right? Yeah. So believe me, this is a film worth seeing. Mm -hmm. Uh, we wouldn't uh, come on and tell you any different. Uh, we would we would tell you what it is because we have bombed on films before. Oh, yeah, no you doubt. know yeah. we've had to, you know. But Kevin Hart brings this through. It's mm -hmm. totally believable. Yeah, like I said, his character was admirable. I mean, and he carried himself with like dignity and just and compassion. Right, and then you, then you add in the city, yeah. using the city as a backdrop. Yeah. It's a living about that and breathing. Yeah, it's a living and breathing yeah. character on its own. The music, you know, uh, the what they open up with yeah. is present time, right? right? And then they take you back through. A whole flashback. Yeah. That's that's what that's what everything that you see up until they bring you back to present time. And I, I love the writing on it because people often say that films have to follow a certain blueprint to be successful, and they're showing that you don't have to do that blueprint at all to be successful. You you just have to have a great story and actually gone on ahead and deliver that story. You know who I would like to see um, in a drama together? Um, Kevin Hart and Eddie Murphy. Because Eddie Murphy and Mr. Church mm -hmm. was excellent. That was another tearjerker. Yeah, so, Mr. Church. Yeah, yeah we watched yeah, that one too. And, and to see them both grow, you know, from comedians, kind of like, you know, with Jim Carrey, they all started from, you know, we saw them in comedies, you know, and uh, on stage as well as in film. And then they all emoted to drama. And not just drama, not just any, I mean, just really, really, really acting. I mean, the type of acting, like you said, the tearjerker. Not all actors can make you cry. I mean, some scripts are set up to be tear jerkers and you still don't cry. So, you know, you have to really, really connect to that actor to to cry, you know, and then that lets you know, hey, they did their job. Because when you are emotionally um, um, attached to the character, you know, they did their job. Yeah, they did their job. I'll say, yeah. listen, if you don't shed a tear, yeah. I don't uh, know what's going on with you. I mean, it's really something where, you know, you really uh, just need to, you know, reassess yourself because okay. this piece is such a great piece. Yeah. It's such a great um, coming out Right. for Kevin Hart as a dramatic actor. Mm -hmm. You've seen him, it's one thing about comics. Comics make great dramatic actors because they have gone through pain. Yeah. And when they go through this pain, they're able, and most of their comedy is pain. Any of the comics that I've ever interviewed, mm -hmm. they say the same thing, that their comedy is based on pain and they're able to thus 
laugh at pain and really what you're doing as the audience is you're laughing at their pain and they open up their hearts to you so seeing him just take it to that next level um is incredible yeah. i mean the 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 dignity that he brings to this character who has had some bad times right. but continues to strive and try to um uh, advance his plight in life and on top of that uh, he finds that he has an ability that he did not know that right. he had until he came in contact with uh, the person Cranston what, what's yeah. Cranston's character Philip again? Philip and, and, and Kevin Hart's character is Dale Dale right and then Nicole Kidman's character is Yvonne, is it Yvonne, Yvonne, that's Yvonne. right, that's right. And the the whole the whole setup and the everybody around in the setting, his 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 significant other, all of them are just good people that are placed yeah. in various circumstances. Yeah. That's what's so good about this piece is they are good people yeah. placed in uh, circumstances. Uh, some out of their control, some in their control, uh, bringing this forth. So it's a great movie to see. So the upside, again, this is a uh, film review, movies, music, culture, and whatever else comes to mind. Brought to you by the Black Ice Chronicles, back in Cleveland DVD. Listen. Pick this up. It's available on lordlandfilms.com. You will be entertained, or you can stream it on lordlandfilms.com. Uh, we at lordlandfilms.com, we produce documentaries. We uh, cover uh, social events, events uh, for the culture, and we also produce physical copies of actual films that were written, produced, directed, and narrated by yours, yours truly, Crazy Dick. So uh, when we say that we do something, we actually do uh, do it. And um, so check out our films at lordlandfilms.com. Okay, so we've been we've been through uh, the setup, the right. opening, uh, how it's written. Uh, we've been through. The politics. We've been through the great acting that's in it. Music. The, the, the music. The music was great. That Kevin Hart right. holds his own, and it's really a great tribute to a uh, yeah, Aretha Franklin. Yeah, a great tribute to Aretha Franklin. So yeah. you have to see this film. So uh, the cinematography, yeah. the way that they tell the story, the it's relationship beautiful. between he and his significant other, right. the relationship between. Uh, Cranston, Nicole Kimmon and himself yeah. when they're playing on screen together yeah. Yeah. beautifully shot uh, just the angles that are used, how they tell the story through others POV looking at the other character uh, it just tells you ahead of time see in film you tell the story through images mm -hmm. and it's less words it's, it's, it's less dialogue and more about the images that you produce. So when you produce images that tell the story through POV, wide angle, medium shot, all that, mm -hmm. then you're telling the story and a story can be told without need of words. And in this in this film, it is exactly that. It was a well-written script. I mean, it was a story about human beings even though it was based on the true story, um, it was written. See, I hate stories, and even on television shows, when it's just so darn gone stereotypical, you know. And they have this stereotype of um, of black people, and they're using played out slang, in which they think is new. New, but it's played. <laughs> it's played, yeah. you know. Um, but instead of it just being just tell a story because you know we say that all the time just just tell a story you know 
there doesn't it doesn't have to be any silliness or buffoonery or just human beings. That's right. It just, doesn't have to be. And that's yo, what this, yo, yo, right, son. just exaggeration and just like over the top, and you just see this shit over and over in some of these films and television and this lame uh, dialogue and, and played out slang in which they act as if it's new. <laughs> But like this script was just well written, and it was just it was just how script should be. It's just it was how real life is. How real life. How real is. life is. You know, just people talking to each other, communicating with one another. No stereotypes. No there That's that's what's so Not great about this one. film. There was no stereotypes in this film. That's right. why I said it's like a it's Sydney real life. Portier film. Right. You know, like Sydney Portier was black. In himself right. and put across the screen, told you story. know, and, and told a story without needing to go into all of the, all of the extra because right. he was who he was. When you right. saw him on the screen, Kevin Hart's character, him embodying the character of right. Dale, he was, he Dale. was who he was. Right. He didn't have to be extra right. and everything. He was out there to try to find the way right. to overcome right. what had been done in the past and move forward. And, and that's what the story was his family. Right. And right. just trying to live life and, and mm. be happy. So if you don't know already, we love this film. Yeah. You know. And, and, and there, there's one, one last part. Uh, on the uh, last Crazy D uh, Talks film production, mm -hmm. I spoke on going to uh, the orchestra and seeing the orchestra and uh, seeing culture that was uh, your own culture uh, taken and you, when you realize that then you go and you're able to enjoy this and say that this is not theirs but ours just reinterpreted right. and what happens in the film there's a scene in the film right. which perfectly captures right <laughs> Just that, and I had we had just talked about that earlier today, and then when we saw the film, mm -hmm. I'm like, there it is, right on the screen. Yeah. How much more proof or bona fides do you need that that is exactly the way it is? So, um, now, what would you rate uh, the upside? Oh, that's easy. I would give it a, a 10 or a 5 stars, thumbs up, mm -hmm. all of the above. And then what would you rate Kevin Hart's dramatic acting? What would you rate that? His skill level? The, the same. I mean, after seeing that, you would think that Kevin Hart has been acting in um, dramas for years. Um, it was believable and you can tell that he really really dug deep and um he did a really good job so i'm looking forward to actually seeing him in more dramas and um now don't get me wrong there was some comedy in it also i mean just just like in real life you know you're funny in real life mm -hmm. too like my grandfather um he had a wonderful sense of humor he was just like wickedly funny you know he would say stuff that like, oh my gosh i can't believe he said it, it was hilarious said that, right so i mean the film was just real life and 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 kevin was i mean the drama he did excellent because we talked about it we said why wasn't um that film up like for awards? yeah because they keep they, they put bill street in yeah, so this and one Bill Street been. just came out. Yeah, you know, it didn't come out uh, at the end in 2018. Yeah. It came out in 19. Yeah. So uh, this film, The right. Upside, should be in the running. Yeah, because I'm telling you, the audience did they love this film? They love the film. Because that's part of what we do too. Not only do we go and watch the films and review it, we observe the audience and kind of get some of their. Uh, feedback or energy and like the audience loved this film in the theater they were I mean they laughed at all the right parts and the sad parts they were sad and it was just I mean it was just nice people really in, in enjoyed this film it's a good film good film 
the upside. So, my rating on it, um, Kevin Hart's acting, a 10. Uh, Nicole Kidman, everything that she's in, I'm looking forward to that new film that yeah, she's Destroyer, in. Yeah, Destroyer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to look. I'm looking forward to that. Yeah. She's just a ten. Period. Yeah. Cranston, you know, you know him from being the meth dealer in that one show that was on, uh, and his just his ability to emote as an actor and be a serious actor as well as a comedic actor. I give him a 10. The supporting cast yes. in it, playing their roles, just everything. New York City as a backdrop, just, it's just incredible. I mean, a, a, a 10. The way that they just show you what is and how two different worlds can come together and each have value to the other world. You know, yeah, just a 10. And, and you know, I have to shout out to Eddie Murphy because if Eddie Murphy didn't do the comedy trading places, right. then I wouldn't see this drama right. by Kevin Hart coming about because everything is steps that lead like like they say if Bill Cosby wasn't on with the Cosby show right. Cliff Huxtable and the Huxtable family right. then we wouldn't have seen 2008 and Barack Obama and the uh, uh, Obama family yeah. you know you know whatever but feelings you know what? or beliefs that you have right. in that um, but before we, we move on yeah, definitely ahead. Um, what did I say in the theater? I said, Aja, I said, oh my God. Her acting was so good. I had to remind you who she was. I said, she's on how to get away with murder. She went from being a, like, what is she like? She's an attorney on how to get away with murder. Yeah, oh, she's uh, a, you know, uh, under, uh, uh, undergrad, really. I mean, she's a well, she's a, Yeah, but yeah. she's she's upscale. Right. She's really... Like high bra, mm -hmm. and to see her in this Transform. film, she transformed. Like even the the tone of her voice, her mannerisms, just her whole, she just shifted. Just excellent. Like we said, the entire cast, the ex, the acting is superb. You know, and um, real good. Speaking of people who who transform, so anyway, we're gonna tell you. Go see right. this film. We want to tell you before we move on to the passage. I have a right. segue in yeah. a little segue. Speaking of people who transform yeah. in acting, but go see the upside. Kevin Hart, mm -hmm. Cranston, Kidman. You Hart, Cranston, Kidman. You will enjoy this movie. This will be one of your greatest picks. It's not something where he's cooning. It's not something where he is playing a role of, of a subservient. You will love this movie by Kevin Hart. You will love this movie by Kevin Hart. So now, go see this, The Upside. Go see it uh, this week. Matter of fact, what's the what's the pronouncement on it as far as box office is concerned? Um, number one. Number and one. And so we didn't find that out until, what, 15, 20 minutes? 15, 20 minutes ago. So, Wait but, a but we're not surprised. We're not surprised. Because it was an excellent film. That's okay. the first thing we said. We were like, we're not surprised. We have, wait, wait, wait a minute, people. Wait a minute, people. Listen. We have a phone call. We have a phone call from 206. They've been holding for six minutes. I didn't oh. even notice. Let's, let's click them up. Hello. Hello. Are you there? Yeah, how you doing? Today? Yeah, how you doing? Who who uh, who are we speaking with? I'm good. Other than Tone. Okay, hi. What's going on, Tone? Hi. What's on your mind? Did you see? Did you see the oh, upside? You know, I I would have to say, okay, I'm looking forward to seeing it. I'm a Kevin Hart fan. Okay. Great job all the way around in any movie that he does. See, I think he's even better sometimes than Eddie Murphy. I heard you comparing him to. But Eddie Murphy got on this weird track where he wanted to be more uh, poppy and and he got into his dressing stage where he was wearing red leather in the 80s, which looked horrible. 
But um, Kevin Hart is really holding it together. He's doing his film career is amazing. And um, yeah, I'm looking forward to the movie. Have not seen it yet, but I your review right now got me more pumped to go see it. Okay, okay. Uh, I, I have a question for you about the 80s. You know, we, we all lived through the 80s sure. and we saw that. And what's your name one more time? I want to call you, uh, uh, say the right name. Uh, uh, it's short for Tony, just Tone. Tone, Tone, got you, Tone. Okay, I just want to make sure that I have the right name. We lived through the 80s. That, oh, red, le that red leather was just hot because everybody wore leather. Cool Mo D wore black leather. And when Eddie Murphy came out there in the red leather, he was considered then doing his thing and then as he went along he began to uh go into movies for like disney type movies and uh less gritty sure. type films right have you seen him in what's the movie that uh, we mr reviewed? church uh mr church have you seen that film no actually i haven't ever seen you have it. to watch eddie murphy and his dramatic uh, his dramatic acting in that piece is phenomenal, Mr. Church. The trailers did not do it justice. It made you it made you think that it was going to be one of those things where he was going to be playing a, subser a subservient to the uh, white family that he was cooking for, and nothing can be further from the truth. And I believe that once you see this film, you will have a different thought process towards uh, Eddie Murphy after watching this film. Wow, that's uh, great. Can you tell me it one more time? Uh, Mr. Church. He came out in uh, the end of 17. Mr. Mr. Church. Yep. And, 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 and what's so beautiful, it's by the makers of, what's the film? This Is Us. The, uh, the show that's on uh, oh, nice. NBC. It's written by the same guy who writes the scripts, but this is us. And what's so beautiful about the filmmaking on this is they're breaking all of the rules as far as how scripts are supposed to be written. And they show you three generations of life. It's just, it's just incredible. Mr. Church. It really should have gotten well, more. For the recommendation too. Yeah, yeah, it really should have been uh, up there so uh we want to thank you for the call and then you know call in again because this was quite uh nice I, to get your perspective on eddie I murphy have one question oh, for go, ahead. You. go ahead okay um i don't know if you guys are aware of this but martin scorsese uh teamed up with um robert de niro al pacino and um joe pesci for one of their last gangster movies that are going to be premiering on Netflix. Have you guys heard about it? No, what's the name of it? Uh, this one's going to be called The Irishman, and it's and it's one of the greatest books that I've ever read. And it's about a, um, the true story of the disappearance of uh, Jimmy Hoffa and the gangsters that were around at that time. I highly suggest you look at, into the movie. It is going to be one of the biggest blockbusters that um, that Netflix has ever seen. It's supposed to come out this year, mm -hmm. and uh, filming ended in August. So I would keep an eye out for it, guys. Okay, uh, looking forward to it. Yeah. All right, uh, thanks for the call, Tone, and we'll see hey. you next time. Thank you for the time. You guys have a wonderful day. You, you too. too. Wow, how about that, people? We didn't even put the number out there, but I guess he was looking at some of the posting I was doing. I said, call in, but the number is 213-943-3358. That's 213-943-3358 to talk about film. You know, we're there, we're here to do that. So now, talking about persons who transform, who transform themselves, um, we just watched a film on uh, uh, Amazon. It was Amazon Prime. Okay, which one? I was thinking about the. Film. No, 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 no. We're gonna get there. I'm okay. gonna put the segue in real quick. Talking okay. about people who transform. Right. We watched this film called The Disaster Artist. Oh, 
Oh, that was good. The Disaster Artist. Yes. Now that that stars yeah. um, James Franco. James Franco yeah. and his brother, right? Yeah. Uh, and it's about a man who they said made the worst film in Hollywood history. Uh, it was supposed to be dramatic, but for some reason people didn't find it that way. But it has become a cult classic, mm. kind of like the Rocky Horror Picture Show. But the subject matter is totally different. But it's like that and people go and it's all overseas and people go midnight screenings to go see this film. It's like the Rocky Horror Picture Show because people repeat lines and they say, do it, do it. Yeah. Do it. Based and, on the life of uh, Tommy Wiseau. That's right. And uh, James Franco's brother is also starring in it. Dave mm -hmm. Franco. Who plays uh, uh, Tommy's best friend, yeah. right? Yeah. In the film, his, his it would appear his only friend. Yeah. Now, what, what gets me about this film is, or what gets me about the story is, mm -hmm. this man was everything that he said right. he was right. he said that I'm going to do this film no expense right. is uh, in the, no expense uh, no expense is too much right Right. just just do this right. so he ended up spending like five million dollars on the film yeah. and, you know he went to the rental house because for those who don't know in Hollywood and Las Vegas they have rental houses that rent out equipment for big equipment like the larger lighting, the uh, five, the five, the uh, five Ks and the ten Ks, the larger lights that you usually wouldn't own yourself. They rent that out, the cable, the cameras, all that to do it. He actually walks into the place and purchases the equipment, right? But here's here's the kicker, and this is the thing that I see, you know, in doing productions. He was exactly who he said he was going to be, right? The people on the set, yeah. the director and the cinematographer, right. they would talk about him yeah. uh, uh, in, in different areas, but he had a documentarian film and everything, right? They would talk about him and say, why is he like this? And why is he doing that? And he's strange. And he's like a Frankenstein, etc., etc." But however, when they went to the bank to cash their checks, guess what? They cashed. They, they, they cashed and they got their money. Right. And so my thing is, when you're just have an appreciation for right. what a person does. Right. When they say, I am who I say I am, right. and they actually cash check, because there's people who go on sets and the checks bounce and they right. still act because they want that experience. Right. right? Right? But here's this man, every time you went, he paid you top dollar yeah, for what you said. He, he gave you your rate. He didn't haggle. Right. He didn't do anything. He gave you your rate right. and you got the check, but yet you would complain. Right. It didn't matter how many takes he had to take. Right. You you're getting paid, mm -hmm. and it's a film that everyone can be proud of because though it wasn't received the way it was supposed to be received in the eyes of the director, right. which was uh, which was him himself, Tommy. Right. It still went on to be successful as a cult film. Yeah, it's really worth seeing the disaster artist. That's right. It's really really worth seeing. But my main point of getting to that, I had to tell that because that really irks me as yeah. a director myself that when you say that you can do something and then people uh, get into their ego, but if it wasn't for you, they wouldn't necessarily be seen, heard, recognized, and appreciated because no one cared. Right? No one cared. Okay. So look. The transformation in the film is by what, what's the actor's name? Zach. Oh, Efron. Efron. Now listen, yeah. you did not know. There's a scene in the movie. It's the first opening scene that they actually shoot of Tommy's movie, and it has to do with a person who is uh, nerdy and a person who is more 
on the gangster side. And let me tell you, when you see this transformation and you find out who actually played this role, because when they shot the scene right. and how strong it was, you know, because it was like behind the scenes of showing you how the scene was shot. Yeah. Even I, we were both sitting there like, oh my God, he really pulled he that off, right? In but you did not know who it was because right. he was in disguise. Right. And then when they sit in the theater, right. I'm giving a little too much work. Watch the film and you will see that Zac Efron is a great actor, right? The disaster artist. That's a 10. That's a 10. Yeah. Okay, so we need to know. Uh, uh, thanks, Tone, for calling up. I, I yeah, because we're looking forward now. To, yeah, yeah, we're looking forward to it. But because just, that cast sounds amazing. And Joe Pesci, Joe Pesci. Look Joe Pesci up, did he? Hi. No. Joe Pesci's not dead. It must be the other guy. The other guy is dead. I thought Joe Pesci had passed on. I thought maybe it was some footage, kind of like um, the wind, uh, beyond the wind, where it was something where it had just got finished. Is he, he's still, he's still with us? Joe Pesci. Yes. Okay, he's still, well, okay, because I hadn't seen Joe Pesci in a while. I just hope that it's not one of those films where we see the N-word and then N-words are blamed for things that didn't happen, you know, because like we said, we're moving forward and not living in the past. So we hope that that's not something that's in that film so, but we do look forward to it and thank you for your um your uh addition of yeah. adding information yeah, to it with we'll the, the Nero, like you said pesci pacino rb kaiteo this is amazing it's gonna be um yeah it's gonna be a, a big film you know netflix is doing big things in fort wow when you read the hollywood reporter the people were talking about you know, the Hollywood system was talking about that they shouldn't necessarily be included in the awards because they're taking away from the theater system going straight to, you know, streaming, you know, but hey, you know, the, the times are changing and just like television, people still go to the theaters like we watch streaming and we go to the theater to watch films, right? Okay, so the disaster artist. We, we weren't planning on rating this film, but like, whatever comes to mind. And this is one of the films that we saw. And what would you rate that film? Um, I would also give the high marks. I would give it a, 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 a 10 also because, I mean, it was just, it was entertaining. Because at first, you know, the movie starts, you're like, where are they going with this? And then you're more pulled in to the dialogue and you're invested in the characters. Because the main character is, he's different, but he grows on you, and um, and you really start to like him, you know. And then you just, and you know, I don't want to get a movie away, but like you said, you see this guy is working hard to to put out a film, and he put a group of people together, and not everyone that's uh, a part of putting this film together. It's nice to him. That's right. It's just like, why are you, you know, and, it's and like he, bullying. And, and really, he didn't do anything to anyone. Right. But produce and follow through on a dream. But I do think once he realized, and it's not, this isn't giving the film away, but once he did realize after watching some of the footage, the behind the scenes footage, that people were like being mean and making fun of him, he did kind of start to like, little you see little he did little things and, and some of the techniques that he had in the film are being used today right they may have not been understood in 99 and 2001 but now everyone is doing some of those techniques right. so for me i give it a 10 i love the behind the scenes aspect of it yeah. the pov shots of it the way that they showed you how it is on a film set and how people can be unappreciative for the opportunity, yeah. especially when they were getting paid. Now, it's yeah. one thing if you're doing something and you're going to get someone to tell in, but even that's 
that's disrespectful as an actor to the person who's putting it all together, who has put out the finances to find the locations, right. to uh, get the props, to get the makeup, to right. get all that, and then to bring the people together, who, and to have the camera works, the lighting, to pull off something that's going to be quality for people to see, like the Black Ice Chronicles Back in Cleveland DVD available on lordlandfilms.com in stream form and physical copy. We get it right out to you. Yeah, so, you know, it's like that. And what I loved was the pacing of the film. Yeah. Never a dodge from no, the film whatsoever. Not at all. That's one thing. And two, like Kevin Hart's film. Never, yeah, never, a, dull. Never, never a dull moment in the yeah. whole film. There was nothing where you said, okay, well, let's rev this back up. But what I loved was when they premiered the film, right. within the film, about the film, yeah. how they paced it oh, out nice. and made it make you feel like you actually saw the movie. Yeah. And then at the end, they show you side by side oh, no, that was clips nice to of the uh, actual, actual film, film. Yeah. and the acting, how they so meticulously yeah. made it so that it matched yeah. Almost to the T, yeah. his film, the the scenes that they showed you in the uh, finished scenes. So uh, it's a ten. Now, moving right along as we uh, come to the uh, next piece. This next piece, Fox, uh, not Fox News, but the Fox Network News. Okay, as soon as I said. Fox and News, they clipped it like it was going to be something negative. I don't know what, what that was about, but we're back and we're still streaming here. Okay, now listen, people. Fox Network has produced uh, quite a few things. You know, they have Empire. Right. They have Star. Like I said, if you're not watching Star, that is nothing but a, re a, a spiritual, religious piece, yeah. you know, opening up from, again, it goes back through the through line and then... Um, Empire is writing some of the best scripts yeah. once they got their footing after the third season. That third yeah. season debacle, that was something, but they got their footing back and they're writing great stuff. And, you know, Fox has some other things, but this right here yeah. is poised. Yeah. This piece that we're getting ready to talk about right now is poised to be, I believe, as big as the Walking Dead. Now, I can't be sure. I can't be sure, but I'm almost sure that this is poised to be uh, as big as The Walking Dead because it has it has a world that has already been written, yeah. and the and the show is called The Passage. Yep. Now let's let's go before we start talking about the actual what we saw. Right. Let's talk about its background first. Okay. You know, the writing yeah. and uh, where it comes from and yeah. what this world is potential to take us through season after season. Yep, this is based on, the passage is based on author Justin Cronin's trilogy of the same name, The Passage. And it's amazing, you know. Um, it takes place, well, I... You have to see it. I don't no, want no, to no, give no. it away. Well, 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 but we, we, we talk about the books. It's based on a virus. Always, yeah. You know, books are always different than the but we have to give them the synopsis. Yeah. So, 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 so it's instead based of they're on, not zombies. Right, but, right. but the right. virus turns them into uh some type of vampire. Right. So what it is is it's a uh almost it is modern time and it's right. gonna be in a post apocalyptic Right. dystopian world in a minute once this uh, virus that can kill you, you you get it in the morning you're dead by evening right right and what the synopsis is is we must uh, we've discovered an immunity to it right. but to be immune you have to become a vampire that this that's basically the storyline of of this show. And First, we let's get 
to give the names okay. of this. Of okay, okay, okay. Yeah, I got Because I want to break down, okay. you know, let's talk about the protagonist real quick and then okay. we'll we'll come back to the cast. Mm-hmm. But I want them to know the story because it's in book form. Okay. And people who read book form, it's nothing, you know, because they can Google it. And so we, we, we can say that because we're not yeah. taking away from the story because we don't know what direction they're going in week to week. Yeah. And we're not going to tell them what they did in this. But let's talk about the main character, the Amy... Uh, Amy Belafonte. Belafonte. First of all, the name Belafonte will Love then name. <laughs> uh, go on forever yes. in this because it's written in the books, and it, and it has to be a ode yeah. to Harry. Yeah. To Harry Belafonte. Yeah. Dale, Dale. They like come. You know what I mean? Uh, <laughs> fighting the power, working to fund the movement of the civil rights movement, right? So let's talk about Amy Belafonte but in some of the research that you found out on her as a character in the books. What what are we looking forward to seeing here before we get to the actress that's talking about it? Oh, that um, according to the, the trilogy, you'll see her grow and her character develop mm-hmm. while helping to fight um, this virus mm-hmm. and you know she plays a major major part in helping to save humanity and her so, life spans yeah, a thousand years a thousand years so yeah. what does that mean people yeah. has the suspense built for you to watch yeah. this show yet yeah, if her Amazing. life spans a thousand years and right. she starts out as in the in adorable the show, little girl a ten year old girl for right. her life spans a thousand years right. what's that telling you people yeah. what's that telling you yeah. right and we're not going to give you the that give part away, right? we're not going to give you the part about how she potentially got to yeah. spanning a thousand years you're going to have to watch the show for that right. but listen so let's go through the cast real quick let's go through let's okay. start with the um the young lady uh i say sanaya yeah, you did. I say think it's Sanaya. Sanaya. This is spelling of her name. Mm-hmm. Sanaya Sydney. Mm-hmm. Her name is spelled really uh, pretty. It's different. It's S A N I Y Y A. So we said Sanaya. Sanaya Sydney. Mm-hmm. Um, she plays the character Amy Villafonte. Now let's stop with her first. Okay. Her ability to emote on the screen and give you different emotions. Yeah is incredible as a child actress 10 years old is is just incredible there are scenes there that are so complex in her facial expression alone pushing her uh, what she's feeling is so complex that i see you know her actually having the title role and this going on for season after season and being able to see her go from maybe a 10 year old right. to an 18 year old to a 20 year old is phenomenal. And all the other things that she'll be able to branch off into her ability to emote her facial expressions, tell the story before she even gets to saying dialogue. And so just imagine if she's acting this well, now, you know, at this level, can you imagine when she's what a teenager, a young adult, to like a woman? She's gonna be just like amazing because she's already amazing. So she's, I'm looking forward to seeing her um, acting over the years. She's really good. Mm-hmm. Um, she's also starring a uh, Mark Paul Gosler. Okay, now what do we know him from? Saved by the Bell. Saved by the Bell. He he played Zach. Yeah. Right. Then he was a young, blonde-haired guy, but now he has turned brunette in his later years, or maybe a dirty blonde. Yeah. They say dirty blonde. He plays a man that can't who has done tours overseas as far as fighting for the American government. Yeah. He is a trained killer who has a glitch in his mental armor, which has to do with his daughter. And that's what we'll say. 
And and so the plans that were planned kind of are take a detour in the opening episode yeah, now, of the past. Now mind you, this is a US government experiment. Mm-hmm. So that's all we'll tell you. So just imagine mm-hmm. from there. It's I'm looking forward to the next episode. Now now just a little politics here. Just a cool little politics here. You know, because they're pushing this, they're pushing this heavy on the net and they're they're pushing it all around. It's kind of he's kind of like a father figure, but at the same time, it's strange to have a grown man walking around with a child value women now, women now (laughs) valuing the child's opinion to the point as if they are of equal, a co-equal in the decision making that's to be made, which leads into a little, again, the glitch, and it leads into, for those who practice, uh, not to say that the story is saying that, right? But for those, and we will have to go back and research the author, and I'm sure as more episodes go, we'll be back talking about the passage in more episodes and we will do more research, but there's a little pedophilia. Okay, it's just, I it feels a, a little well, pedophilia. I saw that as a, a his daughter. I mean, it, it's because like the that, story it's line, strange. Because in the storyline, we'll see, I don't want to give it away. Yeah, don't give it away. But um, I just have to throw that out there because as this goes along, and as we do the research and we find out where the author is coming from right. and what the author believes, then we'll be able to get there. But it just seems just a little strange. But you see, but I will tell this, you know, you see him take out a picture, a family a picture yeah, of well, yeah, his daughter. Uh, his daughter. We and won't wife. say why. Right. His daughter and his why. wife. So, you know, and then flashbacks of his daughter. And then you see him with um Amy. Amy Belafonte. And you see the correlation and why he's like, you know, he has the soft spot for her. So that's what yeah. Right. So so but we just have to say that it's it's, it's strange in this uh aspect that we, we have here and then the other who's the woman who is the doctor? The black uh-huh. woman who's the doctor at the thing. She's another character. It's kind of troublesome the way it's written, which makes me think that, let me just say that it's a great show, but you have to keep your eyes open to what the reality is of what they're saying to you in the pieces. Now, what's what's the- um, Is it Caroline Chakizi? Yeah, she plays Dr. Dr. Major. Major. Uh, Nicholas, I guess it is, yeah. because it's cut off on the on the thing. Doctor yeah. Major Nicholas. Yes. Right. She is not only. Uh, we don't know if she's actually African English or just English uh, of African descent or from Africa, uh, working through England to get this done. But she's here in the states and she has this accent and her love interest is also Vincent Piazza uh, who is also uh, a person at the facility which gets you into thinking why does it have to be a relationship between this woman and this man at the facility and with everything that's going around the net it just seems like they're pushing a signal and as we watch the episodes we're going to see she may be more compliant and willing to do than what she would be willing to do. And that's what we'll say about that because we have to watch and go through and watch more episodes of it, right? So who else do we have as far as uh, other cast uh, members in there? Um, I saw there's an up and coming up and coming uh, actor coming through. Yeah, I have Is it McKinley Belcher? Have, have, uh, I'm sure he's been Okay, like yeah, this. McKinley Belcher, he plays a, 
a person who's a convict and he has nothing else to lose and that's why they approach him. They approach him for this experiment and you don't know. But what's going to be interesting is one of two of the vampires, right? Which gives me, as I wrote this and I tagged it, I said, um, vampire hunter, vampire diaries meets Freddy Krueger because these vampires, you know, they look at you and they stare at you, but then they're able to come to you in your dreams. Which yeah, is- like Jamie Mc, uh, Shane, who plays Dr. Tim Fanning, mm-hmm. and Shauna Babcock, played by Brianne Howard. They, they're able to come to you in your dreams and talk to you and tell you what they intend to do to you. Now, this, this is a new concept, not really because you know, vampires are, are known to be able to do many things, but you know. Uh, but in True Blood, did they come in the dreams? I don't think. No, they didn't come to the dreams. But the elements of what they are is uh, Diary of a Bam- Vampire. That's the movie with uh, Brad, Brad Pitt, Pitt, right? And Tom Cruise. I mean, this is up on that level because the prosthetics and the MUA work on it and the way that they bring the vampire to life in your dreams and what you see in actual real time when the doctors are dealing with these uh, 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 creatures um, it's amazing and it looks like it's going to be a recipe for a disaster it looks like they're out during the day they're up during the day right well, they're, they're in the facility. Okay. They're not seeing the sun. So we don't know how far right. along this is going to be because we haven't read the books, but we're enjoying it. Sometimes it's not... People who read the books are often disappointed, especially people who read DC and Marvel comics. They are often disappointed by uh, what they see on film because right. film is a different medium. There's three acts, you know what I'm saying, uh, beginning, middle, and end, and it can't expand out. And if I see another reboot of Batman, can we just keep Batman? Well, going? I'm sure there's one coming. There's so. another one coming, right? But you know, uh, so DC. So did you hear, people? Just on a side note here, speaking of uh, you know superheroes, did you hear that the Aquaman movie has reached the billion dollar club? Now, one thing, like, we may see it when it comes on, or we might just go see it out of curiosity, you know, or maybe not. But when we watched the trailer, it seemed to me like it was uh, just opinion. It was a rip on the Panther story. Oh, the two brothers. The two brothers, they get into a fight. Who's going to be the king? Who's going to be the king? It it seemed like the same thing. It seemed like they took pages and just took time because it took it. The, the Aquaman story first, old boy who used to be married to, uh, uh, what's her face? Uh, used to be with the Black Eyed Peas. First, he was supposed to be Aquaman. Oh, okay. Coming from off of the yeah. Transformers success. Yeah. Yeah. That didn't happen. And then this film has been under the new guys. It was like right. four or five years. Yeah. The next thing you know, it's ready to come out after the Panther success. Right. And the storyline is you know, parallel to yeah. it, it appears by the trailer that it's parallel to the Panther story, which you know, the Panther story is a pan- is the Panther story. Krugler wrote the Panther story and, you know, from you know, the comic books and adaptations of the comic books and putting it together and everybody seemed to enjoy it. So, Aquaman has come to the Billion Dollar Club Welcome I, I there, don't know. I welcome. just wasn't interested, but I am looking forward to seeing uh, DC Comics The Joker. Now, that looks like it's going to be good starring Joaquin Phoenix. You remember the one scene that we saw didn't go into detail, but he had on the Joker. Yeah, you, you know, it's weird That's going to be it's, awesome. I'm it's sure. weird about the Joker because the guy who who overdosed. Mm-hmm. I didn't find his portrayal of the Joker extremely scary, but I liked old boy's 
betrayal of Jared, Leto. Jared Leto's yeah. betrayal, and then this is a side shoot right. from off of what's supposed to be doing with Jay Leto. So Jared, I, I, Leto. Jared right. Leto. Right. So I, I, I was looking forward to him being the main Joker for yeah. quite a while, but yeah. you know, hey, however it goes, you know, yeah. reboots and restarts. But when we saw what previews of the the trailer for the one that's coming out. Um, October 4th, no, 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 2019. You know, Joaquin, Joaquin Phoenix, Phoenix is going to kill it. Joaquin Phoenix right. is an excellent actor and he goes deep inside so he's gonna to pull out. So that, that's cool, but you know, I just like what Jared Leto, Jared Leto was doing. But anyway, back oh, to... Well, go ahead. well uh, De Niro's going to be in it. Robert De Niro, as well as Zaza Beats. He's going to be in it, so... Mm. It's not yeah, good. Like, good. Okay, so uh, back to uh, the passage. Okay, so the story opens up, and the uh, little girl, ten years old, is mm-hmm. living a decent, uh, beautiful life. She right. goes to a nice school. Yeah, she's everything is fine. But then something happens that you don't really see. You yeah. see her looking at something, oh, yeah. and something happens, and then you you see a sheet, and, and yeah. then she's like that. But then later in dialogue, it's right. told what happened, right? Yeah. So she first she she lived in the house, then she becomes orphaned, and then their whole thing in the story is to find someone young that. Uh, can be experimented on to to do this uh, this antibody that could possibly um, stop the virus from spreading, right? And this is where her life takes a turn, yeah. and this is where that's the initiating event is what happens, and then her dramatic need is to uh, find. Uh, stability yeah. and find family again. That's her dramatic need. The soldier's dramatic need is to find family and yeah. stability. So that's where they connect. And really, this story, though she is the protagonist, is really about the love story between the man and the woman. It's actually about a romance and trying to get back to where they once were. You know, it's kind of like the boys to men song. At the end of the road. Yeah. Can they get back to where they once were? And that's what the actual storyline is about. It's a uh, romance between a, a man and a woman and trying to get back to it. And in between, this story is being told. And he's trying to help the little girl. <laughs> when I was watching the film, I was thinking uh, it'd be perfect if. You know, they would adopt her, but then that would be the end of it. And that would be, the end be of a the story. trilogy, so it can't. It wouldn't you know. be a trilogy. Right, yeah. right, right. So, the world itself, you don't really see the outside world so much as you see inside of the facility so, more. Yeah. So, the, the outside world has not played a part, does not play a part in this. Right. This is close cropped in, dealing with the characters. Mm-hmm and what happens to them that caused them to move. There's no external thing except for this virus, this airborne, but you don't see it and you don't you haven't yet seen what it does to people. You only see reports. So we're looking forward to seeing uh, how they show the virus is what it would be described. You only see how it affects them, like the changes they go through once the virus is in their body. Like to the the main doctor's, not the main, yeah, friend, his friend, and you saw how he went. From, well, well I, I thought I thought that they were on some kind of opening uh, investigation on something. It didn't have anything to necessarily do with. Well, he was attacked. I know. He, it, you see, know, it didn't have anything to do with the virus, but yeah. they happened to be attacked by yeah. uh, night walkers. Right. I would say, right. and then they find out that this, yeah. these night walkers right. antibodies can protect from this virus that comes along three years or yeah. it was three years later, yeah. right? So, the 
I have to go back and watch it again because I didn't see the correlation between the virus. I thought that the vampire stood alone from the virus. So I have to go back to see no, it again and if the antibodies yeah. did it. But yeah, you'll see how the well, I don't want to give it away. So so it's a fight yeah. for humanity right. not to turn into day walking, night walking, zombie like getting in your dreams. Yeah. So the vampire. Th- right. The good thing <laughs> is you do see in episode one, you will see how this average human being turns into this uh, vampire once this virus gets into a system mm-hmm. and you see his physical mm-hmm. change. And right. It's, good. And it's sad. Well, you have to see it. It's, it's good. It's, it's good. like the invasion of the body snatchers. Yeah. It's like you're not the same one. Yeah. It once the mm-hmm. once it takes over takes you over, you're not the same yeah. person again. Okay, so uh, they definitely well, don't glamorize being a vampire. Oh, they really they don't. don't. I mean, if you if you I mean, not like an interview with the vampire. An interview, that's interview. right. Not diary of a vampire, but interview, interview with, of yeah, vampire. Yeah, that was like you know kind of glamorous. Yeah. Well, well, really, on certain scenes, it really wasn't. When the beginning, well, you know, I guess you think what was it was it, Brad Pitt, the chat or the stat, the stat, the stop, yeah, yeah, how he, you know, just when 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 he drank the dead blood, yeah, and how he began to decay, right, and how long it took for him to come back, and what it took for him to come back, yeah. you know, that that was no glamorous. At it at all. No, that part was gross. Eating rats and I mean drinking that rat part blood was gross. and yeah. all that. And then true blood, they made uh Eric and Bill kind of like fashion plates a little. <laughs> yeah. Until they you know. And they were just trading on trading back and forth on Suki. Oh, you know Suki was you. just the the sex the sex toy between the two vampires. And it was weird about that, but we won't get on that because that that's a long time ago. I am so glad that we don't have to hear Suki anymore. I, I'm, I'm so happy. The first few seasons. First few excellent. seasons, but they had jumped long ago. They something. brought in the elves <laughs> and, the, and the gnomes and, you know what I'm saying? Fairies. I, the fairies. I, yeah, I, thought, just, I, thought that they, I thought we were going to be in The Hobbit. I thought we were going <laughs> to see some hobbits. Yeah. Anyway, people. So, jumping what would you? Yeah, yeah, jump shark. So, what would you rate this uh, first episode of the uh, passage from what we researched about where it comes from? What would you rate this? It's really good. I mean, I would give it an A because I'm completely. I'm, give it a I'm in an A. An A, okay. Yeah, like um, so since we're talking about. Television. Television. Yeah, we give it. This I give it like four stars. You know, I mean, or is it five stars? What's the most stars? Five, five, five stars. stars. So I would give it five stars and um, and give it definitely an A because it was really good and the cast is great, the acting is great, and I I can't wait to see the next episode. And from the previews, it's gonna be really good. And we have a black protagonist. It's gonna go into the future a thousand years. We like to see ourselves, the Lieutenant of Horror. We like to see ourselves nice in the future. See, and it'd be nice to see her grow into this character. Yeah, absolutely. Her acting is superb. Absolutely. And then, um, so what I rated, I give it a ten. Also, a plus five stars. The opening, the way that the young lady can act and right. emote and bring this character to life. The way that Zach from Saved by the Bell right. uh, brings it home. He's older, more mature, and he and his action sequences are great. Not like the last The Predator where the guy just didn't seem like he knew how to hold the gun correctly. Just my opinion, but he just didn't. But this right you here is... Uh, Go ahead. In the passage, mm-hmm. I thought of the little girl, the young lady who's starring. Mm-hmm. Um, Sanaya. Sanaya. Yeah, Sanaya Sydney. Um, I thought about Drew Barrymore because we saw her growing uh, as a little girl growing up and acting, and, you know, and um, 
So I'm Drew looking Barrymore forward to from seeing a dynasty. Her. Yeah, so I'm interested. And she made me think of because as a little girl, Drew Barrymore was like a, a excellent little actor. You know, she mm-hmm. was able to emote and wasn't she in Kramer? Was it Kramer versus Kramer? Mm-hmm. And um, so just to see her as an adult. So I'm looking forward to seeing this young lady girl. And we hope that she will be protected and not necessarily have gone through right. what Drew Barrymore went through. Right. Or, you know, uh, people allowing her to be out there in that life from what we saw. Right. You know what I'm saying? We don't get into people's personal life or business, but we want this young lady to come through and be uh, successful. But maybe some having experiences in life then bring about great acting on the screen. So this has been another great episode of the film review. Movies, music, culture, and whatever else comes to mind. We are the husband and wife team. I'm Crazy D. I'm Tracy. And we review culture and movies, music, politics, and society. And we will see you next time. And don't forget, this was brought to you by... Lordland Films, The Black Ice Chronicles, Back in Cleveland DVD, uh, streaming now on lordlandfilms.com, or you can pick up the hard copy by ordering it, and we will get it out to you. You can have something tangible, because tangibility, baby, is something that you can barter with in the future so stay tuned for that okay. but you know what i have to to go back okay because yeah. her catalog is huge but it was et that i was thinking oh, e. about e. okay okay that's right that's right with right. drew very more and et with the cute little pigtails yes yeah, yeah. yeah so again so we'll see you next time and it's been great we want to thank uh Tone for calling up and uh, yes. hipping us to this film is going to be on Netflix. Irishman. Uh-huh. Looking the, forward to seeing it. Uh huh. As long as it's not no, in word field. It's, no, it's going to be excellent. Hopefully not. It's Hopefully not. Excellent. Hopefully not. You know, they get away with it. You know what I'm saying? Why they want us to stop saying it. But anyway, yeah. and don't forget that Dolomite is coming. Yep. Starring Eddie Murphy. That's right. A near 60 year old playing a 40 year old. Yep. Great exercise and great eating. And see Mr. Church. Yes, excellent film. Excellent film. And see the disaster artist. Yes. And and see James Franco. See the upside. Yeah. See these films. And then go back and watch all of the various episodes of the film review. You know, up on Vimeo, up on YouTube, the podcast audio only on uh SoundCloud under the film review and you know join like share uh, subscribe follow all of the different pages and we're out of here the film review movies music culture and whatever else comes to mind brought to you by lordlandfilms.com the host crazy D and Tracy Dion all music heard on the film review available on iTunes Apple Music Live stream recording and audio, Crazon Dion. Research on topics, Tracy Dion. The film review, movies, music, culture, and whatever else comes to mind. All rights reserved. Lordlandfilms.com. Copyright 2019.